Peace and blessings, brothers and sisters. Shalom. A revelation word, a word of revelation, knowledge to share. The first Adam, the second Adam. The fall and the rise of both Adam and man. First, we're going to go in the book of Genesis. Genesis 3.5. Adam and Eve fell through the desire for divinity and greatness and an exalted state. When they wanted to be like unto God and they looked upon the fruit of the tree after the serpent beguiled them, he beguiled Eve, but at the same time, Adam followed. And what were they trying to do? What did the serpent tell them? The serpent, we're in the book of Genesis chapter 3. Verse 5, starting at the fifth verse. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the, tr and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. Many of us brothers and sisters seek divinity, seek greatness through the, the will, the wisdom, the power, and the spirit of God. That's what the first Adam did. And when I speak of the first Adam, I'm speaking of Adam and Eve. Because in the beginning, God made them male and female. And the Most High called them Adam. And they sought. What did they eat the fruit for? Why did they eat that fruit? Because they had a desire for divinity, for greatness, and an exalted state. That's why they ate that fruit. Everything that they needed, they already had. Everything that they needed. They already had. When Adam and Eve fell, what was the nature that they lost? We're going to look in the lost books of the Bible, the first book of Adam and Eve. We are in chapter 6, verse 5. As a matter of fact, we're going to start chapter 6, verse 4. And the Lord said unto Adam and Eve, You transgressed of your own free will until you came out of the garden in which I placed you. Of your own free will you have transgressed through your desire for divinity, greatness, and an exalted state such as I have, so that I deprived you of the bright nature in which you then were and made you come out of the garden of, to this land rough and full of trouble. We will now go into the first book of Adam and Eve, chapter 8, verse 2. Then the Lord said unto Adam, When thou wast under subjection to me, thou hadst a bright nature within thee, and for that reason could see things afar off. But after thy transgression, thy bright nature was withdrawn from thee, and it was not left to thee to see things afar off but only near at hand, after the ability of the flesh, for it is brutish. When Adam and Eve fell, they were given brutish flesh, animalistic flesh. What is brutish? What is brutish? Animalistic, without law and order, strongly and grossly sensual, showing little intelligence, lacking understanding, Base instincts or desires, extremely violent or wild person, like an animal, heavy, dull, stupid, and irrational. We know this came about. Also, we're going to look in the Word and see what the Word says. We are now looking in the book of Second Peter. When it talks about brute flesh, Brute flesh, those that walk after the flesh and not the spirit, who do not mind the things of God, but the things of the world, the things of the flesh. I'm going to start Second Peter, 
second chapter verse 10 but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government presumptuous are they self-willed they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities whereas angels which are greater in power and might bring not railing accusations against them before the lord but these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speaking evil of things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption we're talking about the brute flesh that came upon Adam and this brute flesh was not just physical flesh it was also the mentality the mentality once again we are in the first book of Adam and Eve from the lost books of the Bible and the forgotten books of Eden for those of you who have contentions that is something you work out with the spirit my spirit is fine with it led by the Spirit of God now first book of Adam chapter 10 starting at the fifth verse then God said to Adam while thou was under my command and was a bright angel thou knewest not this water but after that thou has transgressed my commandment thou cannot do without water wherein to wash thy body and make it grow for it is now like that of beast and is in want of water Again, one thing we're going to keep in mind while we go through this lesson, brothers and sisters, is he said to Adam, he was like unto a bright angel, like unto a bright angel. Let's see what the word of God says in another book to see whether it's line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. In the book of Matthew, chapter 22 starting at the 30th verse Jesus is talking he says at the resurrection people will neither marry nor be given in marriage for they will be like the angels in heaven they will be like the angels in heaven when we look into yet another book in the Nakamadi library the book of Thomas the contender Yeshua is telling Thomas, the end shall be the beginning. The end shall be the beginning. How do we start over? The end shall be the beginning. What shall we be like? We shall be like bright angels. He tells us in the book of Matthew, starting at the 22nd chapter, 30th verse, we shall be like the angels in heaven. The brute nature of us the the flesh of beasts came upon us after the fall after the fall when adam and eve sought to be like god they wanted divinity they wanted greatness never understanding the divinity and the greatness that they had they wanted to know good and evil the trickery of the enemy was so great that when he told them you shall be like God, knowing good and evil. One of the first evils that they learned was that they lost their bright nature. He was a trickster, a liar. Okay, he was a liar and a trickster. They lost the evil that they learned in that moment was they lost their bright nature. They lost their eternal lives and were subject to death because they transgressed the law of God. This first Adam brought death, but the second Adam brought life. The first Adam was subject to water. He needed water in order to feed his brute body, his body that was made like unto beasts. But Yeshua, through the water and the blood, brought life. He brought life. He is considered the second Adam. There are only two men in creation who are called the sons of God, who have not a normal uh, beginning, who have not a normal beginning. In Adam's case, he was formed from the earth. And in Yeshua's case, no man could claim to be his true father other than God. Adam and Eve's father. I mean, I'm sorry, Adam and Yeshua's father was God directly, directly. No other man could stand in their stead.
when we look at Adam, when he sought greatness, he actually diminished himself and lost that bright nature, lost the greatness that he had been given. But now we're going to look at the second Adam, because where the first Adam sinned, he transgressed, he fell away from following the ways of God. The second Adam, Yeshua HaMashiach, was a faithful servant unto the end, unto the end. And what did he do? Because we have to wear the flesh of the first Adam and carry the bloodline, the DNA of death by the first Adam, the second Adam, Yeshua HaMashiach, when we believe in him, we have to take on his flesh and blood in order for us to gain life and life everlasting. How do we know this? Because in the book of John, starting at the sixth chapter in the 53rd verse, Yeshua said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat my flesh, of the, the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink the blood, ye have no life in you. Whosoever eat of my flesh and drink of my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. My flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Now, through our repentance, through our confession of the word of life of Yahshua HaMashiach, brothers and sisters, that we need follow because the word of life is sent down from God for our salvation. Since Adam fell, what does Yahshua HaMashiach tell us? What does the word of God tell us? Okay, once we eat of his body, once we drink his blood, what does it tell us? As we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Remember, Adam and Eve were put out of the garden of paradise. They, they were put out because they took on the nature of beast, a brutish nature. But now, Yeshua HaMashiach, through his grace and mercy, has saved us through redemption by his blood. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. What corruption? Remember, it was through the fall of Adam and Eve that that brute flesh, that beastly flesh, came upon them. We born the image of the earthly. This is not the first image we were made into. We were like unto the angels. We had a bright nature. And as a matter of fact, even when we wear covering, brothers and sisters, it does not matter how beautiful you consider your clothes to be. They're actually based on a badge of shame, a badge of dishonor. Remember, Adam and Eve were nude and did not know. They did not feel uh, out of place amongst each other. They got the fig leaves and put them on themselves because of the shame, because they knew they were naked. So no matter how beautiful a garment appears to be, it's actually a badge of shame because we are clothed over in dishonor, this flesh, when we recognize this brute flesh that is upon us. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. We shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal, remember, the first Adam brought in death. But the second Adam, the faithful servant, Yeshua HaMashiach, brought in life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. When we don't know who to follow, when we don't know what to follow, we follow Yeshua HaMashiach. Who is he? He's the word of God. He is the way we should go. And why do we know we can trust it? Because he's the truth. What does it bring us? What does it lead us to? To life. Life. The life that the first Adam lost when he brought in death. Okay, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be and we shall be changed, 
For this corruption must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Adam and Eve were wearing immortality. They were dressed in life before the fall, before the great transgression. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. What is victory? Life. Where is the life? Yeshua HaMashiach. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And here we find the difference between the first Adam and the second Adam. The first Adam brought death. How did he bring it? Through seeking greatness, divinity, wanting to be like God, not recognizing the glory and the joy that he was already experiencing. But now we're going to look at the second Adam, Yeshua HaMashiach, that put everything back in order that we may have the life that we lost through the first Adam. This is what he tells us to be like as we believe in him, the word of the Most High, Yah, who is the word, Yeshua HaMashiach, many of us call him Jesus, he is the word of God, okay, we're in the book of sect of Philipp Philippians chapter 2 starting at the third verse, now remember the first Adam through Eve, they were both called Adam. They were seeking to be like God, not being humble, not honoring his word. But we know that Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, he was faithful to the end. He followed everything God told him to do. Okay, now the book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 3. Let nothing be th done through strife or vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Let look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus Yeshua HaMashiach, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, a servant where the first Adam sought greatness, divinity, to be like unto God. The second Adam teaching us according to the spirit, not following the enemy, not following a lie, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. He knew he wasn't taking on a divine nature. He took on a humble nature. He left the eternal realm, honoring God, doing what God said to save God's creation, where Adam had sought greatness, divinity, and intent to be like God. The second Adam left the glory he set in, and took on the form of a servant, took on the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name where Adam trying to be like God being in diso disobedience he didn't get exalted he was humbled that which he had was taken from him but Yeshua HaMashiach Jesus being like the second Adam coming into the world to save man and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross, obedient unto death, where Adam was told how to avoid death and was disobedient. Yeshua HaMashiach was humble unto death in order to bring us into the glory, the kingdom of God, the family and the, the, the fruits that the Most High has for us. Let me finish. 
Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Yeshua HaMashiach every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Yeshua HaMashiach is Lord to the glory of the Father. The first Adam brought death. The second Adam, through our faith in him and through his faithfulness to God, he did not transgress. He brought life. He brought life. And in the lost books of the Bible, where God says you were like unto, he's speaking to Adam, you were like unto a bright angel but he lost it through his fall. We look in the book of Luke when Yeshua HaMashiach brings us back. The book of Luke tells us, neither can they die anymore for they are equal unto the angels and are children of God being children of the resurrection. He is telling us Yeshua HaMashiach is the second Adam, setting things in order which Adam threw in disarray. Again, brothers and sisters, we're going to go back into the book of Adam and Eve, which is in the lost books of the Bible, for the forgotten books of Eden. In the first book of Adam and Eve, in chapter 10, starting at the sixth verse. But after that thou hast transgressed my commandment, thou cannot do without water, wherein to wash thy body and make it grow, for it is now like that of beasts, and is in want of water. But what does Yeshua HaMashiach bring to us? Jesus says, Whosoever drinketh the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Where Adam brought death, and this bestial, brutish body, Yeshua HaMashiach, is taking us back into that everlasting life. Corruption shall put on incorruptible. Mortal shall put on immortal. The mortal came about through the fall of Adam and Eve. Our, our resurrection, our life comes about through Yeshua HaMashiach, following the word, the way, the truth, the life. And we shall all be changed in the twinkling of an eye by following him. Just as the DNA of Adam brought death, the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach brings life. Brothers and sisters, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And we know that through the first Adam came the fall. And again, we should not do things through strife, through vain glory, being as brute beasts. What a brute beast. They are of the flesh, worldly. They mind those things of the world. But when we follow the Spirit and we follow the Word of God, then we are being changed from glory to glory and victory to victory. And at that last trump, we shall all be changed. We shall all be changed. And this flesh shall put on immortality. This thing that is earthly shall put on that which is everlasting. And death shall be swallowed up. Where the first Adam brought in death, the second Adam has brought in life unto us, brothers and sisters. And when that happens, the end shall bring about the beginning. How do we know? How do we know, brothers and sisters, that it'll be the beginning? There's an eighth day coming. There's an eighth day coming. When we follow the ways of the Most High God, when we trust and believe in His Word, when we do what we can and let the Spirit of the Lord guide us and teach us and lead us, when we know the first Adam brought about the fall of man, the second Adam, Yeshua HaMashiach, many call him Jesus, brought about the final rise, the victory, and life shall swallow up death in victory. Who is the life? Yeshua HaMashiach said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now we know, brothers and sisters, through the fall of the first Adam, 
it brought about this bestial, brutish flesh. What are the works of the flesh? The works of the flesh. To let us know that brutish nature. We know that we are under or responding to the flesh. These are the actions of the flesh. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envying, murder, drunkenness, revelings and such like of which I tell you before as I have told you in time past that they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such there is no law there are some who even though God has poured out his spirit on the male and female servants, you have some that feel as though the women should not speak. Well, God has poured out his spirit on the male and female servant in these last days. If anyone feels as though females should not speak, let it be known that this is done in love. And love covers a multitude of sins. The first love being for the father. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The second love being for the family, the house of Israel. Brothers and sisters, I wanted to drop this word of knowledge that yes, when you read in the book of Adam and Eve, which is in the lost books of the Bible, we were like unto angels. You hear it when Yeshua HaMashiach says in the resurrection, we shall be like unto angels. We are going back to our first nature. He is going to make all things new. All things new. And finally, brethren, we that follow the word of the Most High God, we know there shall come a rest to the people of God. There shall come a rest to the people of God. In the book of Hebrews chapter 4, starting at the ninth verse, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, as God did, did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So there is a rest, brothers and sisters. There is a rest that is coming. All right? And we, I'm encouraging you, exalt, exhorting you to follow after the word of the Most High Living God. And let this spirit be in you that it be in Christ Jesus also. Let this mind be in you that be in Christ also. How would that mind be in you through the reading of his word, through the most high God sending his Holy Spirit to testify to your spirit? Be blessed and be encouraged. The first Adam caused the fall, but the second Adam brought with him resurrection and life. And that life that be in him being you also. Peace, blessings, and shalom.